A new research study finds that 95% of the baby foods that were tested came back positive for traces of heavy metal, including lead and arsenic, even the organic brands. This is terrifying. In this video, I'm breaking down the research study and giving some suggestions on how you can avoid this heavy metal exposure. Coming up. What's up, mama? Welcome back to the Kids OT Help channel. If you're new here, my name is Nicole. I'm a mommy, I'm a pediatric occupational therapist, as well as a certified lactation counselor. And on this channel, I'm sharing my resources and information from these various professions to help make motherhood just a little bit easier on you. So if this sounds like something you're into, do me a favor and hit the subscribe button for weekly helpful tips. All right, guys, so let's get into this. Now, the research study I am referring to was conducted by Healthy Babies Bright Future, and that was done here in the United States. Now, what they did is they pulled 168 different types of foods. So this could be puree foods in jars, pouches, puffs, teethers, even formula from 61 different brands. Some of these brands we all know and thought we loved I will name them, don't you worry. And what they did is they took these different types of foods from these 61 different brands and they tested them for four different types of heavy metals. These four heavy metals include lead, arsenic, cadmium, and mercury. So I'm gonna name a few of the brands that were pulled for this report. Plum Organics, Infamil, Up and Up, that's the Target brand, Earth's Best, Ellis Kitchen, Gerber, Happy Baby, Sprout, Similac, and Beech Nut, just to name a few. And of course, I believe that every parent should have access to this information so that they're able to make the most informed decision for their little one, which is why I am linking this study in the description box below. So feel free to click the link and just review it. I mean, they have a summary and they have the full report and it was put together beautifully. It's really easy to get through and digest with a lot of charts and pictures, making it easy for parents to understand the big picture. So long story short, 148 of the 168 foods that were tested came back contaminated with at least one of the heavy metals that I've mentioned prior. So if you're not aware of what the potential impact can be of too much exposure from these heavy metals, I'll share with you that these are no neurotoxins, which means it's toxic for any of our brains, but especially our little ones whose brains are developing at a rapid speed and they're the most vulnerable. It's been known to decrease our little one's IQ scores, have negative impact in terms of cognitive development, and it's even been linked with cancer. So of course you're probably wondering, how is it even possible that brands are able to sell foods that might not be safe for our babies with these heavy metals that are being detected during testing? And the current issue really is that there is little to no regulation in terms of enforceable federal safety limits which essentially leaves it up to the brand's discretion to try and lower the amounts of trace heavy metals that are found in their products. And while it's important to note that we are being exposed to these heavy metals in our environment due to pollution, which then makes its way to groundwater and eventually into the soil that's growing the food that we all consume, baby food or not, the problem again is that our little ones are the most vulnerable. So not only are they exposed to heavy metals in the environment, but then again, they're exposed to unsafe levels of heavy metals in a lot of these baby foods. So in the absence of enforceable federal safety limits, a lot of public health organizations have come together and given recommended safety limits. So for example, public health advocates have stated a limit for lead of one part per billion. But by contrast, of the foods that were tested in this study, no such limit exists for mercury, cadmium, or most of the foods that were tested for arsenic. That's really unimaginable to me. And what's even crazier to me is that this study hones in on 15 different types of food, most of them being baby foods, that have the highest level of toxicity for these four heavy metal types. And according to this research study, kiddos under the age of two who were consuming large amounts of these foods that have been tested with high levels of these heavy metals collectively experience an 11 million 
point loss in IQ scores. And again, that's from unsafe levels of exposure of those four heavy metals. All right, so here are the 15 foods that were flagged to be of high risk of heavy metal exposure, and I'm just gonna read it. So any rice dishes, including beans with vegetable. And I just wanna say that rice in general is known to be high in arsenic. And so if we can reduce the amount of rice products that our little ones are consuming, we can significantly reduce that heavy metal exposure. And I actually do an entire video on this called Three Reasons to Avoid Baby Cereal, because a lot of baby cereals are rice cereals. And I will link that up above if you are interested in checking that out. Moving along, we have milk, whole milk, rice, both white and brown rice, apple juice, infant formula, fruit juice blends, so grape juice and apple juice, infant rice cereal, Cheerios, and other oat ring cereals, sweet potatoes, and specifically the jarred or pouched sweet potatoes, not the sweet potatoes that we go and pick up from the store and cook ourselves, soft cereal bars and oatmeal cookies, macaroni and cheese, puffs and teething biscuits, bottled drinking water, and fruit yogurt. Now you might be thinking at this point that you just give up because you thought milk was great for your kid and you definitely offer the puffs because your child loves it. And you know, this is a snack or a meal that you consume regularly. And what I want you to keep in mind is that I don't think any one of these in isolation are bad. I think what we have to keep in mind is that it's the compound effect, right? So if we're consuming rice multiple times a day and several glasses of milk a day and having some fruit juice on top of that, it's the compound effect of all of these foods that have been tested and have higher levels of lead and arsenic that is really putting our little ones at a higher risk, right? So if we can really just reduce the amount that we're exposing our kiddos to these types of foods, then we are also reducing the risk. And this is why I advocate for the baby lead weaning method, because to be 100% honest with you guys, when I look at the foods that I just read aloud to you, I feel a sense of relief as a mom because Kai was not exposed to any of the baby food products that are mentioned in this study because we skipped baby foods, baby foods. This stuff didn't exist. Our kiddos would be perfectly fine to skip the baby food entirely and eat the same foods that you and I would eat at any given meal with some slight modifications. So if you're interested in learning more about the baby led weaning approach and you wanna work with me, I'd be happy to guide you. I offer a mini course called Weaning Essentials and it's gonna give you the why. You're gonna understand why this approach is so beneficial for your child's development. And obviously we've just learned one major reason is that your child wouldn't be exposed to as many heavy metals that are found in these baby foods. It's huge. It affects their cognitive development as I've discussed earlier. But there are so many other great benefits that your little one gets from heading down this route. It's also gonna help you understand when your child is ready with an interactive readiness quiz, as well as resources to work with your little one's pediatrician. Because in my experience, not all pediatricians are well-versed in baby led weaning. And there's a missed opportunity to speak with parents about the amazing benefits that happen when kiddos are given the opportunity to learn to self-feed with table foods. So if you want to learn more about that, the link to weaning essentials is also linked in the description box below. I hope you guys found this video informative. And again, if you want to check out the study, which I highly recommend that you do, it's linked in the description box. And I really want to hear your feedback. So please, any questions or comments, leave them down below. And let's have a discussion about this because again, I think it's so important that every parent have access to information like this. We should know what our little ones are consuming and there should be safety limits. Let's, let's just state the obvious. I don't understand why that doesn't exist. So let's get a conversation going about it in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching and I will catch you in the next video.